When we did our first story last fall on Y2K, the year 2000 computer glitch that threatens to shut down the world's computers come January 1st next year, a lot of people still thought it was a joke. Today, no one is laughing, least of all the corporations and public entities that have spent an estimated $200 billion trying to fix the problem. At the end of 1999, the world prepared to celebrate a new year and a new millennium. But many people were afraid of a massive technological collapse, a global shutdown because of Y2K. What was Y2K and where did it come from? Y2K originated in this worry that when the dates in computers and pretty much everything that ran on them, which was a lot of infrastructure at the time, went from 99 to 2000, it would be unable to process what date that was. And then that is what originated this kind of fear that, okay, well, what, what is the computer going to think when it goes to zero, zero? Is it going to think it's 1900? And what is that going to mean for everything? Building up to Y2K, there were press briefings saying this is going to be a huge issue. So you saw the chairman of Intel, you saw the uh, chief economist of Deutsche Bank, these people whose opinions you were listening to saying that this was going to be a major issue. And it made it feel like something that, uh, you know, you, we all really had to pay attention to. Those cryptologic systems have to be able to accept the date functions just like any other system does to ensure that the, uh, the necessary uh, encoding is affected. But it definitely felt like this was something where the, uh, we were about to encounter the consequence of having everything be computer focused now. We issued warnings to people. This wasn't quite war. We said to people, if this massive problem isn't fixed, then there will be severe problems. And what might happen if the so-called Y2K scenario came true? Now, the federal government is comparing Y2K to a huge natural disaster, like an earthquake, a hurricane, or a tornado that disrupts people's lives for days, weeks, or maybe even months. So that was the part that wasn't really clear. There was this sense of urgency and you knew something was gonna happen, but the actually looking at a error and then what will happen because of that error, that wasn't very clear. There wasn't a very clear you know, explanation of what might actually happen. There was particular concern about the banking sector because of its high level of computerization. All that stemmed from this basic idea that if the data information is incorrect, that's going to have lots of unintended consequences. So something like a, uh, you know, how you calculate somebody's age in a, you know, for an insurance company or for banks too, where that's a major factor in certain uh, decisions that the computer makes, that was going to cause problems. I was about 13 years old when Y2K happened, and I remember, as a, you know, a young geek feeling like this is kind of a, you know, some Mayan apocalypse that was going to happen. It was kind of, it was scary, but it was also thrilling because it was this kind of technical problem and you hear about these people solving it. Some people were so concerned, they began taking extreme precautions. You had friends who were building, you know, safe spaces for nuclear fallout in their backyards. They were stockpiling rations, they were stockpiling water. You heard about grocery stores that were running out. I never went through that, but you, d you knew of other families that did it. Well, here's where we have everything. We've got uh, a lot of stuff in here. It's for Y2K. We have about a year's supply of food here. We've canned things. We have canned goods, canned roast, canned chicken. And ATM is a pretty good example of this complete dependence on uh, infrastructure that's based on databases and computer software. Um, so yes, you saw people going and withdrawing money. Money was this kind of core of it where so much of that was dependent on uh, the soundness of the computer software that's in it. As much then as probably now. If it's a case of my family or some other one, then I'm going to opt for protecting my family. So I believe that there might be roving gangs, there might be um, just total unrest on the street. So this would, uh, this would be your answer to chasing somebody off? Absolutely. In general, you saw it was preparation for this kind of, this thing you see in the movies of, you know, money, is, money is, doesn't matter anymore, it's all your survival, it's all about, you really have to take drastic action absent of it. Um, but for, I think for kind of more moderately paranoid people at that time, which I would count myself in, included in that, that was the main concern, was to make sure that there was, um, you know, that this wouldn't result in a backlog of errors that would take forever to rectify. And what happened when the clock struck midnight on January 1st, 2000? Everything actually turned out to be just fine. Actually, I've been dreading having to say that. 
2000. It is funny, it is weird, and you know what? A lot of people are probably gonna get the, the date wrong on their checks today. And then you started to see New Zealand and Tokyo all have their celebrations on TV, and then you eventually saw Times Square. The ball dropped, the blackout that we all thought was gonna happen didn't happen, and you all felt relieved, and uh, I think we didn't think about it for very long after. So far, though, the Y2K bug seems to have been squished, leading some to suggest that the danger posed by the bug had always been grossly exaggerated. Y2K was unusual because you had the highest authorities saying that this was a major issue. You don't want to be the ones to defy that and it turned out to be wrong. So it's a particular troublesome area where uh, you, know, you don't want to over, you know, overstate how safe it's going to be. You know, if you ask people who deal with it and who are invested in it, you ask them plainly, like, what's, what's your takeaway on this? The takeaway was the things that we fear being completely uh, dependent on dates and what this origin is it was not going to be that consequential. For InsideEdition.com, I'm Sal Bono.